Hi, I'm Erin Lindsay King and welcome to Alaska Filmmakers, a program dedicated to exploring the many talented individuals working in the Alaska film industry. Today we are joined by one of Alaska's very own born and raised writer and directors. Over the last decade, he and his group of filmmakers have been entertaining the Alaska community with a variety of comedic shorts and feature films. Today, they're expanding their fan base outside of Alaska with their current feature film entitled The Beekeepers, featuring an all-Alaskan cast and crew. Alaska Filmmakers is pleased to welcome Bryant Maynard. Hi, Bryant. How's it going? Hey, pretty good. Good. Thank, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Why movies? Where did your love of movies begin? What was I? About two. Uh, you know, I saw Star Wars. I think that's where it started. Pretty much my whole life, uh, started, you know, grew up, got into the comedies, got into the Kevin Smith, Judd Apatow, uh, John Hughes, you know, just kind of like catching up on everything. At some point I just decided, that could be me. That I could make movies, you know. <laughs> And you have an educational background in film, is that correct? Not exactly film. I mean, I studied journalism, and then part of that is broadcast journalism and uh, directing for television. So stuff like that. You know, that's where I learned how to edit uh, and shoot for the most part. So. so you grew up as a kid watching movies, lots of comedies. Walk us through some of the first videos you ever shot, maybe something in high school that you did. We started out shooting on a you know, eight millimeter tape camcorder uh, with onboard mic, you know, just shooting sequential movies, no editing software, just uh, making music videos, uh, silly, you know, just home video stuff, you know, like M. Night Shyamalan type stuff, early M. Night Shyamalan. Just never really stopping that, like, you know, it was just, it became a passion, it, it, it was fun, and uh, it became, you know, something that I thought about just doing on a regular basis. So, uh, you know, that kind of turned into going to college, meeting people, meeting other like-minded people. It, that led to our first feature film, Checked Out, which is uh, kind of a, at the time, we kind of touted it as some kind of Clerks meets the Breakfast Club movie. Uh, and, you know, we premiered that and we had, you know, a bunch of people show up and it just felt, you know, it was our first project. It was really fun to see that come together and be like, wow, we made a feature-length film. That's, that's kind of ambitious, you know, it's, you don't see feature-length films come out all the time, you know, that are, that are, you know, on a low budget or no budget, pretty much. You seem to have a, a big network of people that you work with. Were these friends that you worked on with this? Well, yeah, they all started out, you know, as just a group of friends making movies, and then sooner or later, more people see the movies, more people approach us and say, hey, we'd like to help out on the next one, and which is really fortunate for us because we are shooting on a zero budget almost. I mean, not exactly zero, but, um, you know, everybody's coming in, putting in the time, and uh, just because of the passion, because they love working on the projects, and it's, uh, it's rewarding to then see your movie on a big screen or on a Blu-ray disc and watch people laughing at it or connecting to it, and well, that's enough. That's really enough to get people to come back and keep working. So yeah, if you could just talk a little bit more about the process of doing your first feature film, because I think there are probably a lot of Alaska filmmakers out there that that's their main goal, and what sorts of resources you had at your disposal. Well, for our feature film, Checked Out, it was difficult because we didn't have any hand really in the community here. I mean, because there really is a film community here now that you can take advantage of if you know where to look. But when we were starting, um, it was just all our friends, my, my high school buddy was the director of photography, you know, uh, you know, and uh, we did audition, so we, you know, like, we, we found uh, the only people that I didn't know were the actors. As far as feature films go, you know, my directorial debut, and it was the first feature film that I, you know, ever finished writing, and so, you know, we were all just learning at that point, and uh, I, looking back, like, I would say, in, in today's day and age, you know, these seven years later, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, I, I would say um, if you're making a feature film, it, it's a good idea to uh, do something that, you know, do something that is not too ambitious. Do something that requires um, dialogue, you know, learn the basics of 
bringing a character to life. Uh, make a movie about someone sitting around and talking because uh, it's easy to do. You know, um, most everyone has the resources to, to put something together like that and just learn the basics, do something, and then based on what you learn from any project, that should you know, tell you what's next. Like, well, we were able to pull this off, we can do that better. Uh, we should probably avoid doing this or fix the mistakes we made with this. Like, just start somewhere manageable where you're not going to get discouraged. What are the things, some of the things that you maybe like and dislike about directing work that you've written? It, does it make it more difficult at times because you have a really specific vision of what you see or how you see the words playing out onto the screen or does it make it easier at times also? Personally, I, I really enjoy the writing process. If you know that you're going to be the one producing it and directing it and maybe even starring in it, it's just like you know uh, that you can you know that you can write exactly what you want. So it's like it's really freeing to be like anything that I decide uh, to put in the script is is about to be followed out. So it makes the writing process really fun instead of just kind of not knowing what you're going to do with your script when you're done and stuff like. Uh, and to me, like all of my favorite stuff, uh, all of my favorite films are, you know, mostly writer-director type projects. You know, ones that uh, are just a really specific voice. You know, and and ones that uh, you can tell are come from one place instead of a big studio machine of formulas. You know, like Tarantino or Kevin Smith or Judd Apatow or uh, Wes Anderson. You know, these people that have a real voice and something to express. Tell us a little bit about Scarface Productions. Uh, the Scarface name is, it was basically just, uh, it's just that, it's a name. I mean, it was a continuation of what video work I was doing. So it basically started with Checked Out and, you know, has continued. What other kind of productions has it been affiliated with? Have you guys done shorts? And oh yeah, you know, we've, we've done a lot of shorts over the years. Um, you know, videos, uh, documentaries. Uh, you know, and we try to um, be involved in, we try to be involved in all the local uh, film competitions or any kind of gatherings um, because, you know, there really is like, uh, you know, in addition to all the different, you know, subsections of the community, like there's a really good underground like guerrilla community of just people that are showing up to these like 24 hour, 48 hour film competitions or these things and, and we really get to a chance to, and, and more so than it was like 10 years ago when like movie making wasn't as common um, you start to see the same people showing up at all these things and you see everybody in this community getting better together and like feeding off of each other's ideas and uh, it's really cool to be able to see like on a regular basis to see like what people are able to do in this community and really like I, that's why I think this whole web series is a good idea it's like we're quantifying where all the talent is and where all the resources are. I mean, which is not really in place right now. What has your experience shooting movies in Alaska been like in general? I mean, I know you have your network of friends, but outside of that, what has your experience been? Alaska is an interesting place to shoot. Um, you know, it's uh, my favorite time to shoot is the summertime because it's absolutely beautiful. You could shoot outside all day and everyone's loving it. Uh, you got infinite daylight. Um, at the same time, you know, it's the, it's the opposite in the wintertime, but you still have a lot of interesting opportunities. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's been interesting. It's, and I can tell that it's changing now, that, now that the industry is coming up here. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see how that changes. You know, like, I, I remember growing up as, like, kind of a guerrilla filmmaker and just uh, not, you know, just going out there and getting the shots, like, it was pretty much like a paradise for just uh, being able to do whatever you wanted in this town, kind of, and like, you know, we'll see how that, <laughs> we'll see, you know, we'll see how, um, how, you know, just all this um, industry stuff coming in here, which is exciting itself, but we'll see how that affects it. Now, The Beekeepers is your most recent film, so tell us a little bit about those stories and how they tie together. Okay, uh, the, the Beekeepers is, it's a college comedy. It's, uh, it's, it centers around these four societal misfits that, uh, you know, just go off and uh, go on misadventures, hijinks, etc. You know, um, pretty, pretty hard to, uh, to describe some of these plots uh, because they're very character-driven films. It would be like, how do you describe the plot of 
The Breakfast Club. They sit around one room the entire movie, you know, I mean. The, the actors that are featured in these films are, are the ones that I've been working with for years, you know, so it was like after we had made a few movies and made a few shorts, and then I, you know, really decided, like, like these, these guys are, you know, like, the ones that I think could push, that could carry a feature, so. You know, you got all, all the Scarface cast regulars like Jay Gorley, uh, John Whitlock, you know, Joey Weaver, and you know, these guys that keep coming back and they're really, really funny. They're really good at improvisation uh, and they're really smart and they, they know, you know, they just, like, they all enter the project knowing what to do. And, um, you know, and that's, that's also another thing that's really good about working with uh, the same people over and over again is you get to learn each other really well. And there's a certain point when I can just sit back and I don't even have to direct the movie anymore because these guys know the characters better than I do and, and they, they know their jobs um, perfectly, you know. So, and even them acting with each other, they know all of each other's tricks and they bounce off each other without skipping a beat. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been really good working with all these guys. Uh, you know, David Turnbull, he's produced all of our movies, um, you know, and he's really good to work with. Uh, and we, you know, we're just getting really on point with, uh, you know, just getting everything in order and pre-production. And it really is a full-time job, you know, like to really do this, you have to take time off work. You have to just say, this is what we're doing from, you know, we had a month of pre-production for the beekeepers, just every day, all day. And it's like, we're not getting paid for this, you know, <laughs> like we're, 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 we're doing all this um, because it has to be done, you know, like, and so with a project as elaborate as the beekeepers with a hundred actors and 50 different location changes and all these props and uh, you know all these things like it just it had to be you know you have to put the time in to to really make sure everything works well and on, working on a gorilla level that's that could be difficult that could be something that would make someone not want to make movies but you, you just got to push through it I guess. And you say that your stories are very character driven and these actors that you work with, John Whitlock and these other guys that you work with, are their characters very similar to their own personalities or where are you drawing the inspiration for the characters in your movies? Uh, a lot of these characters come from, I mean, a lot, uh, you know, just in the script, a lot of the script comes from uh, things in our lives or, you know, things that I've observed. Uh, some of them are directly, you know, based on experiences that we've had. Um, so yeah, you know, like it, it just feels a little more real that way to me, you know, when you um, when you're able to draw from things like that. And as far as the actors go, uh, it's based on you know like what I how I know they are and their reactions. But you know, we put a little bit of a spin on it. Like of course you you plug in some kind of archetype for this character or this dynamic, and uh, uh, so you know it starts out with this you know, kind of formulaic, um, like, character dynamic, and then you just add in all the things that nobody expected because it's just coming out of their head right at that second. So it's kind of a mix between uh, writing a character and then letting the character breathe. So. And you have acted in your own films. What is that like? Uh, acting, well, to me, acting is the most fun part of the process. And it's, a, it's kind of a two-way street because on one hand, if you're acting in a film and you're not sitting behind the camera watching everyone, you're missing things. You're, you're, you're missing things that you could have control of as a director. But you also have this weird type of way to control the scene because you're directly, as an actor, you're directly feeding the other actors kind of like what their reaction should be. You know, like if I decide to push them a certain way, they have to go. So I'm controlling it as the scene is playing out, where normally a director has to sit there and be quiet before he can like give input. You can kind of push, you know, if you're a main character in the scene, you can, you can push the dialogue certain ways, which is an interesting uh, way to have control over the scene that most directors don't have, actually, so. Casting films with actors that you've worked with before probably makes it a lot easier as well. You kind of know what to expect of them in their performance, and they know your writing style, what you're looking for in your stories, your point of view often as well. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's um, I, I mean, typically when I'm writing, I, I already have them in mind, so, you know, it's, it's and at this point, like, we have a really, I'm really happy with our acting troupe. You know, I spent 10 years, like, 
uh, testing out actors and then bringing back the ones that are really great. And and at this point, I feel like you know we could make a, a movie. Our next movie is just going to be like have this really diverse cast of characters, and you know I'm excited about that. Well, tell us a little bit about that. What what is your future project that you're working on? Are you working on several scripts right now, or you yeah. have one that you're focusing in on? Uh, yeah, we have several ideas, uh, several scripts. Um, I couldn't say exactly what's next right now. Um, it just kind of, it'll take off when it does, you know, whichever idea seems right. But, you know, we'll see. What do you enjoy most about filmmaking? What is most fulfilling for, for you? I know you say you really like acting. You think that's one of the best things. In my opinion, like, any movie can be great, no matter what genre or what it's doing. But to me, the most important thing that a movie can do is, like, make someone laugh. I mean, you know, some people might think that, like, a horror film is the best thing that can exist, or, you know, crying at a romantic comedy, or I don't know, or whatever. But, like, to me, like, like something that's hilarious is, like, the most important thing that a movie can do, because it makes your life better. It makes you being just who knows what you were doing to like laughing your ass off. And so like that's that's why I do it. Like any movie I make will have some element of comedy. I mean, I'd like to make different types of movies too, but e even if it was like a movie like uh, <clears throat> Inglorious Bastards or something that's great, you know, some some movie that's that's dynamic and is something you've never seen, but it still has like uh, uh, this hilarious, you know, like uh, that's really important to me is that uh, there's some element of comedy, just because that's my favorite thing to do, and that's the thing that I think I'm best at. As far as even though I'm trying to, you know, do other things now, I'm trying to like focus on drama, focus on suspense, you know, just all the tricks. Like I'm trying to learn all the tricks of filmmaking, but we have a really firm root in comedy. Thanks for talking with us. We really appreciate it. Thank Brian. you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this episode of Alaska Filmmakers. We'd like to thank our host, Out North Theater, and our guest, Bryant Maynard, for stopping by. If you'd like to learn more about Bryant's work and Scarface Productions, you can find his links and contact information on our website at www.alaskafilmmakers.com. Thank you for joining us, and remember, everyone has a story to tell.